All right, we are on problem number 10. Problem number 10. And this says, on the first is 10 minus, absolute value of 10 minus k is equal to 3. And then we know that the absolute value of k minus 5 is equal to 8. And they say, what is the value of k that satisfies both equations above? Let's do the first one. The absolute value of 10 minus k is equal to 3. That tells us that 10 minus k is equal to 3, or 10 minus k is equal to minus 3, right? So what happens if 10 minus k is 3, so k, just based on the first equation alone, I get k is equal to 7, right? 10 minus 7 is equal to 3. And here, k is equal to 13. So just on this first constraint, we have k is equal to 7 or 13. So now let's do the second constraint. I'll do it in yellow. So k minus 5 is 8. So k minus 5, this, that absolute value is equal to 8. So it's either k minus 5 is equal to 8, or k minus 5 is equal to minus 8. right? If k minus 5 is 8, then k is 13. If k minus 5 is equal to minus 8, then that means k is equal to minus 3. In order for k to satisfy both of these equations, well, they, well, I've just kind of solved it. Uh, what k satisfies both these equations? Well, 7 only satisfies the first one, and negative 3 only satisfies the second one. But 13, k equals 13, satisfies both. So that is your answer, 13. Next problem. Problem number 11. I've got to do some drawing. Image, clear image, invert colors. I'm going to go for a walk after this. I need to work off that turkey. All right, so let's see. I have a line here like that. That's line M. I have line L, something like that. And then I have this perpendicular line up here like that. And then what do they tell us? They tell us that this is perpendicular. Let me switch colors. They tell us that this is 65 degrees. They tell us that this right here is x degrees. Oh, and there's another line there. I, have to, I haven't even drawn it. There's another line that I haven't drawn that is this. Switching back to the green. So this is 20 degrees. Oh, whoops. This is 20 degrees. And so this is x. x is only just x is just this thing right here. Not this whole thing. And this is 20 degrees. OK, what do they want us to figure out? So what is the value of x in the figure above? All right, so we just got to do what, what I like to affectionately call the angle game. So what is? And, and the angle game, I just try to figure out as many angles as I can figure out. So what is what is the measure of this angle? Well, this angle and this angle are complementary. They add up to 90 degrees, right? Because we know that this is 90, so this whole thing is 90. So if this and this add up to 90, what is this? Well, x plus 90, well, not, I shouldn't use x. Well, this is going to be 25, right? I don't know, uh, 35 degrees. Right? No, 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 25. Right, 25 degrees. 25 plus 65 is 90, correct? Yes. As you can tell, addition is my weak point. So this is 25 degrees. This is 20 degrees. Can we figure out x? Well, sure. We know that all of these three angles combined have to add up to 180 now, right? Because they're all kind of collectively supplementary. They all, you go around, you go halfway around the circle. So we know that x plus 20 plus 25 is equal to 180. x plus 45 is equal to 180. So x is equal to 1. This is the problem I, this is where I always mess up. So if it was 40, it would be 1 for x is equal to 135. So that's our, that's our answer. Next problem. Yeah. Which clear image. Which invert colors. All right. So let's see. So number 12. That last problem was one that my cousin had marked up pretty incorrectly, so I, I had to take some pause just to make sure I, I didn't mark it up incorrectly. OK, problem number 12. The median of a set, the median of a set of nine consecutive integers is 42. What is the greatest of these integers? So the median of nine consecutive integers is 42. So 
42 is the middle number, right? So, and there's nine consecutive numbers. So 42 is the middle number, and there are nine consecutive. How many numbers are going to be greater than 42? Middle, median means middle, right? So that means there are five numbers greater, five greater, and there are five. <laughs> what am I doing? That means there are four greater and four less, right? Because there are a total of nine numbers, four less, 42, and then four greater, right? And they're consecutive numbers. So what are going to be the four numbers greater than it? Well, 43, 44, 45, 46. And the question asks us, what is the greatest of the numbers? Well, it's sure, it's going to be 46. And you could have written out all the numbers, but you know 42 is the middle. There are four greater and four less. So you just have to do four. It saves you a little time. Problem number 13. 13. Let the function f be defined by f of x is equal to x plus 1. If 2f of p is equal to 20, so 2 times f of p is equal to 20, what is the value of f of 3p? This looks fun. So 2 times f of p is equal to 20. What is f of 3p? So let's evaluate 2 times f of p. So it's 2 times f of p. Well, that equals 2 times, and you put p into this equation, 2 times p plus 1, right? And we know that equals 20. And so you know that 2p plus 2, I just distributed the 2, is equal to 20. 2p is equal to 18. p is equal to 9, right? We just solve for p. And this is just, you know, they, they're just trying to confuse you with notation. There's nothing really that fancy here. It's a very simple equation to solve. And once you know p equals 9, then we say, well, f of 3p, that's the same thing, because p equals 9 of f of 27. And now this becomes just a simple function evaluation. f of 27 is equal to 27 plus 1. 27 plus 1. 27 plus 1 is just 28. That's it. Next problem, problem number 14. Problem number 14, I'll do in green. Problem number 14, I have to do some drawing now. All right, I'll do it big, because it looks complicated. Big line there. I have a line here that's almost horizontal. And then this is, looks like it's perpendicular. Yeah, it is. OK, like that. And then I go like that. There, and then I have another perpendicular line like that. All right, that's that's a nice looking drawing. Okay, so then this is J, K, L, N, M. They tell us that this is 90 degrees, is perpendicular. This is x degrees. They also tell us that this is 125 degrees. They also tell us that this is perpendicular. In the figure above, KN, KN is perpendicular to JL. OK, we knew that because they drew it. And LM, LM is perpendicular to JL. Yeah, we knew that because they drew that there. If the lengths of LN, so the lengths of LN, Ln and Lm are equal. Ln and Lm are equal. These are equal lengths. What is the value of x? Well, if we know that these two sides are equal, what do we also know about its base angles? Well, sure, that this angle is going to have to be equal to this angle. Right? So if that angle is equal to that angle, let's figure out what that is. If this this purple angle here is 125. What is this? Well, they're supplementary, so they add up to 180. So this is 125. Oh, I just realized I only have 35 seconds left to do this problem. But actually, I will continue it in the next video, because I only have 20 seconds now to do this. So I'll see you in the